Welcome to the Joanna Podcast. I'm your host, Shalia. And your host, Nina. And today's words of affirmation say, if you take the first step, God will take the next. So the word of the week this week is appreciation. Um, it's recognition and enjoyment of the good qualities of someone or something. Um, I chose this word because I think a lot of us may um, not show appreciation for people or, you know, let people know that you appreciate them. I think it's something like you have to make a conscious effort of doing. So what's up, sis? You cool? Where are you at today? How you feel? Um, I'm okay today. I'm probably like an eight. Today was kind of like a blah day. I don't know. Both of my kids got sick all of a sudden. Everybody was fine when they left this morning, but um, so I had to pick Ava up from school early. And then I went to pick Aiden up. He was fine when we it was he was fine when I picked him up. And then when he got home, he was saying that his stomach was hurting. But he did throw he threw up a little bit this morning, but not a whole lot. Listen. I don't know. Mm. Well, yeah, so they, they feel better. Yeah, they always got something going on. And then Ava was telling me kids that her school was throwing up. It was, she was like, you got to come get me. Yeah, yes. but they had just had it. They just had one. when I Because I think he wound up give, gave it to me. That was like a month or so ago. So. Who knows with these kids, Joe? I know. Mm. But he was um, so. so. You said you what, what number you said you had? An eight. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm at like a six. This time adjustment, I'm tired. Um, <laughs> Girl. Right. Like I'm tired. <laughs> and I feel like yesterday on well, my normal Sunday where I I prep meal prep and do I ain't do none of that because I slept late and still was tired, so um yeah i'm like a six yeah hopefully this time change is sets in soon because i can't do this <laughs> what? they just taking an hour back that they gave you sis I know, <laughs> but I know that they said they was gonna stop doing it it's like <laughs> Yes, they did. They said that they were making it a law that they weren't going to change the clocks. Look they were up. thinking about doing it, but they did. I mean, you know, in November we moved it, so got to move it back. But they That's what I'm saying. They were saying after that that they were trying not to change it. I don't know. It's just annoying. I just got to get used to it. But as soon as I get used to it, then it's going to be like, fall back. I know. I got to change my clocks. I didn't change my uh the clock on the, on the stove and the clock in my car. Child, our electricity, our power always going out. So it don't even matter. We don't even change it. <laughs> yeah, power, it'd, be, it'd be like a regular rainstorm and the power power go out. So the microwave or the stove. Yeah, I never set my microwave on. I never <laughs> never set my microwave on. But uh the stove, yeah, I do set it. Yeah. You wouldn't even know the power went out till you wake up in the morning and be like, Oh, the stove blinking. The power must have went out. That's, <laughs> That's true. How yeah. it out. That's true. Or I don't know, like, the stove is a different way off. The time is way off. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So, what's your Oh, I Like That joint for this week? So, my Oh, I Like That joint is um, the Class of 88 uh, podcast with Will Smith. Did you listen to that? Not yet. I oh, saw it, but I haven't listened to it. Yeah, I listened. Well, I'm, you know, it's several episodes, but um, it's good because each episode is really good. Like, it's kind of like a storytelling. So he's like, the first episode is where they tell us their story, um, Jazzy Jeff and Will Smith. And then, you know, I mean, 88, I was only seven years old, but <laughs> I didn't know that that year was pivotal for a lot of these acts. So he has like DMC on there. It's a bunch of people. Queen Latifah is like everybody from that class is on there. So it's like the stories are webbing into it and it's good. Like I didn't know about crazy Russell Simmons, like how he um, managed the Fresh Prince and all that. So it's good. 
Okay. Like Rakim talks. Rakim tells his story about like you know when he first rapped and all that. So it's good. Okay, I'm gonna have to check it out. So um, I got a nope. I don't like that joint this week, <laughs> and I don't like when you talk to somebody or you try to tell them something. They be like, I know, I know, mm-hmm. I know. Like you yeah. don't know everything. Just you're not even listening. You're just I know, I know, I know, and. That, that annoys me and working with people be like I be wanting sometimes to be like you don't know everything <laughs> like one yeah, that uh, Tyra Banks, um top model she was like we were rooting for you like, <laughs> you don't know everything so yeah that's my opa. nope I don't like that drawing yeah this guy that was at my job he was doing it every time he was getting trained Needless to say, his contract definitely didn't get renewed. Listen, <laughs> no, every did like come on. Even if you do, just it's okay to just go along with the flow. And your head be like, I already know this. You don't have to say all the time, but you know. Um. So prime time. Did you buy anything this week? I didn't. Buy, no, I didn't buy anything. So you um, out here making me look bad. Okay. <laughs> no, you just probably got more money than I do. Definitely. Well, no, I'm lying. Okay, I'm lying. I so maybe like I feel like it was like a month ago in no, we're in March. In January, I went to buy me a circle bottle, right? You know mm-hmm. what the circle thing is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how ever I registered or signed up or whatever. It didn't go through. And they like contacted me and was like, oh, there was no order, blah, blah, blah. So, unbeknownst to me, I had actually signed up for a subscription. Oh. I had signed up for the subscription of the actual cartridges that go in the bottle. Oh. And I didn't realize that until I got the notification that my but that myself was shipped. Oh. So, I'm like, okay, what is this? So, basically, I have the cartridges. They were delivered. I have the cartridges. And then, I believe, afterwards, I went online to order the bottle. Oh, okay. So, well, have you, I, did you get the bottle yet? No, that was, this just happened. Yeah, it's just oh, happened. Okay. okay. You got to let me know how it is. Yeah, I, I got to log back on and make sure I actually ordered it. <laughs> yeah. For some reason now, so I drink the sugar-free drinks, but I got to get the ones with no aspartame because that, mm-hmm. it, it leaves like me feeling queasy. Like after I drink it, my stomach feels weird. So mm-hmm. they have the Welch's ones without the aspartame. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if the circle. You have the circle ones. I wonder if they had that in it. Oh yeah, so, I can check. <clears throat> so, because even when I drink like diet, if I had a taste for a soda, I drink like a diet, but I can't do it. It's like yeah, I, re- I can tell when some some certain diets, like I could do, I could do Coke Zero. Like I could do a Coke Zero, but like some certain diets don't. You can tell it's sweetened with that. Yeah. So I, I'm always catching somebody's cell, but Alta is having this in my evil cell. Um, so I went on there and I bought some makeup and some new brushes. Um, and I bought some perfume. Oh, when is that over? The 28th, March 28th. Oh, okay. Yeah, I need to go in there. I have an Alta card and I never go. <laughs> I barely go either, but when I seen that they was having a semi annual, because a lot of the stuff is fifty percent off. Oh yeah, so I was like, let me get the stuff I need now while it's on sale. Mm-hmm. So. All right, you gotta hit this join up. Is where we highlight a small business, and once again, is Women's History Month, so we're highlighting a black-owned, woman-owned bakery. It is called Sweet Indulgence Bakery, and their motto is Satisfying Sweet Cravings. They offer specialized desserts, custom event cakes, and chocolate treats. Um, you can find them on Instagram at sweet underscore indulgence 215, and their website is www.sweetindulgencecakes.com. Girl, I gotta stay, that's why I gotta stay off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be looking so good. 
and um, she has a she, she has a storefront. I believe she does, but it's not in Philly. I think she's from Philly, but her storefront mm -hmm. is in Cherry Hill because the address says Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Um, but you see those cakes where it's like on there is one thing. Then when you light the candle, it's an, it turns into something else. I don't know. Oh, I never is. saw that before. Well, yeah, that's like this new trend. I forget what kind of cakes they're called, but she had those, and then just everything be looking so good. And I'd be like, I can't have it right now. That's what I'd be thinking. <laughs> <for that. laughs> so I'm like, I gotta stay off of her page, but um, she always be posting good stuff. Let me see what the cakes are called, cause I hate when I see something, but then I don't know what it's called. It's called a burn cake. A burn cake? Really? Yeah. So it's like on on the top it says one thing. And then when you burn like the uh, paper, it says something else. Oh, okay. It's real cute. Like it could say on there like, happy birthday, Shalia. And then when I burn it, it could say, will you marry me or something sweet. Oh, like, will you, know, you marry me? <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> That's the kind of me like it's one message at the top. Then when you burn it, it's another message. They're really, really cute. So mm -hmm. make sure y'all hit her up and support her um, and get some good treats. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a current event? Girl, no, if I didn't write anything. <laughs> they, so they, um, they found two, they found two of the shooters from the SEPTA bus shooting. Okay. Good. So they said they, I guess, um, trying to find the other two. Oh, a mess. It's, it's too much going on in the world. Like, especially, I don't, it's funny because I don't even keep up with the Atlanta, Georgia news. Because <laughs> honestly, where I live, it don't really be nothing going on. Like, even on the ring notifications, they'd be like, missing dog, missing cat. Are you missing your cat? <laughs> Listen, shoot, you be on the you be on the phone up you want to be like shots, <laughs> like shots three miles away. <laughs> It'd be like um package stolen, all just all types of vandalization. But yeah. um yeah, I, I I caught like a um press conference today and the mayor was talking or whatever about it, but it, a mess. <laughs> were the kids that was shooting? Or? I believe, yeah, I believe so. I believe they were like adolescents, but yeah, I'll have to actually like look, look into it because I caught it, you know, while I was like coming in the room. But, um, you know, it's a shame. I don't, they are saying that the two shootings are connected. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It's funny because I saw something, I was scrolling the internet, I saw something that there's I'm going to call him a, a guy. He was older, probably around our age or a little bit older. But he was talking about the victim and how the victim, and I don't know the victim, but it's just weird to me when people you know, get on the internet and like, they were a good person and they were this, they were that, and they didn't deserve it. And so people in the comments were like, um, he just had on his internet that he was saying F. The shooter's dead father and all of this stuff. So they were trying to say, I guess it was had something to do with that. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't warrant a shooting, but I can understand how grief is. And if you're disrespectful in that way to somebody, not again, not saying it warrants you to shoot them, but you know, you can't say those type of things to people that are unhealed and think that it's okay. So. Yeah, so so both of the boys, they were 18. Okay. The, one turned himself in and another one, the U.S. Marshals got him. Okay. But yeah, one of my friends, she posted on there and she was like, um, she was like, I blame the, she was like, I blame the parents. Y'all need to take care of y'all kids or something like that. <clears throat> and then people were in the comments like, well, somebody was in a comment and they were like, how you going to blame a the parent? They can't, <laughs> they can't control another person. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it starts at home. You should know if your kid has a gun or not. Just like they have that man on trial for his son 
this is the first time that they charged a parent for one of the school shootings. Mm -hmm. um, so they're like, y'all should have known. He was saying he was wilding out, and like you, when you when you make access to a gun available for a child, yeah, you need to go to jail. Yeah, it's not locked up. Like, no, you need to go to jail. It's crazy. But even with that. Kids walk in a house, check their book bags, check what they're bringing into your house. You know what I'm saying? Listen. So I, I, I got to look into it, it, but if I'm not yeah. mistaken, they may have purchased this gun for him. Really? Yeah. I have to, That's why I have to look, I have to look at a look into the case, but um, it's just because I think a lot of kids, you know, find a gun or, you know, steal a gun for their parents, but I think in this case, they it was like an ongoing issue. But yeah. Mm. I mean, it's hard to like it's very hard to be a successful parent. You know, you can't always control the outcome of your child, what type of person they will be. But you do also have to be conscious of what you have around your child and what kind of information you're giving them and making sure that you're checking in on your child. Make sure that you, you know, have some type of relationship. Sometimes parents, they don't talk to their kids. They don't have no relationship with them. They don't try to, I'm not your friend. You know, it's, it's always yeah. talking at kids, not seeing what really is going on with them internally. It's like, I, you know, you want to be at a, like me. If I pick my daughter up, she's like, let me tell you the tea. <laughs> you know, let me tell you this happened, that happened, this happened, you know? And even when I was talking to one of the parents, I was telling her stuff. So they decided, I'll tell you about it. They decided to order a, Wingstop. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they ordered Wingstop at school. And I'm telling a little girl mom, I'm like, yeah, did they tell you about Wingstop? Both both of the two girls' moms didn't know nothing about it. The what? school ordered it? No, the, the girls. Kids. The kids. Yeah. That, they do that. They they do that because one of the kids here, I gave her a gift card for Christmas. She's like, oh, I'll get the order at school. How? Yeah. Oh, uh, Uber just comes there. Yeah, Uber just yeah. comes there. Uber comes there and they get the food. So she had somebody from school had orders from there. And when I picked her up, then they wanted to order the next day. So they ordered Wingstop and they came to the school, whatever. But the other parents didn't know at all. Uh, child, that's too much. But see, that's the thing. Like one of her friends, she probably know how to manage her money. Ava, as soon as she get money, she's spending it. So uh -huh. she got to tell me if she wants the money for it. But yeah. Crazy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you got to check because like we we had an incident before and it's just like you're bringing marijuana in here and if something god forbid happens and the cops have to end up here whatever we don't know that that's in here so from then forward checks <laughs> we get random checks they ain't no nope don't even say nothing randomly checking stuff because we live in a different area. I think it's only one other black family that lives on this road. So, like, wow. we know that kind of That'd stuff. Be first stop. <laughs> That'd be the first stop if something happened. Yeah, I mean, I think I do also. This is the thing about being a parent is that you also got to kind of like tackle your own shit. You know, a lot of people don't tackle their own stuff, and a lot of people really didn't have. You know, just knowing like my husband, other people, like I know what their situation was growing up. They maybe didn't have that one on one relationship with their parents. Um, and so it's kind of hard for them to recreate it sometimes. Um, but, you know, when you become a parent, that's, you know, you you going to eventually this person going to be out in the world. Yeah. And people yeah. is going to look like look at you. Even if you did everything right, you could have did everything right. And that child, because I know a lot of people who they put so much into their children and they... But it got to be a battle. Like, I think some yeah. some of those parents who their child still end up out there, yeah. like, let's give them everything. Yep. And make sure yeah, they sometimes, they but it's not, to me, it's not even a matter of, like, you give them something, but you let them know how they got it, where it came from, you know, what you had to do so you can appreciate it. Like, I was saying, you know, Anytime I went out with my mom and she, I'm ordering the cheapest thing. I'm picking out the cheapest thing. Like these kids, they, 
they don't care. They, know for the most expensive. they do not care. I was, one of my friends was telling me how she took her niece out. And this girl, she was like, she gave her, she's like, no, this is how much I'm spending. She would not want to order the, the burger that was the amount of money that she could spend. Like some of these things, I had nothing then to get spoiled. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> like very spoiled. But that's the thing. A lot of people overcompensate. It's, I mean, like I said, it's hard, but you have to try to like get advice from other people or, you know, because some things, the way you see things, it could be wrong. You know, sometimes you just got to be like, oh, you know, this happened, blah, blah, blah. Maybe get other people's perspective sometimes. I don't think that was something that our parents did at all. Mm -mm, no. Or if anything, a lot of times it's like, well, this is what my mom did. So this is what I'm going to do yeah. to you. <laughs> you turned out okay. So, yeah, I, it's a lot of that going on now. But it's, it's, it's a work in progress. You got to find that balance. And you got to be consistent. You got to stick with it. All of that. So, yeah. Okay, so this week I'm gonna go back since I skipped. I'm gonna do Pisces. <laughs> I told you. I was like, how we get all the way here to Taurus? Because I looked at I didn't really look. I looked at the previous. Yeah, I didn't look at the beginning of this season. I looked at last season, and I was well, anyway. Nevertheless, <laughs> so Pisces, you know, Pisces got a little time, you know, um, for money. Aspects are showing a need to bring more creativity and beauty to your working life. At the same time, there's a push-pull relationship between the money you have and earn and the money you owe. It's time to strike a balance between the two by creating a payment plan for any credit cards while figuring out how to bring in more money each month. Mm -hmm. Sounds like my life. Um, and for love. Your whimsical romantic sign is hosting Venus, the love goddess herself this week, which makes you absolutely giddy with anticipation. Hopefully, Bay is ready for the amazing surprise surprises you have in store for them. Your creativity increases even more during Sunday's Sun Neptune conjunction in your first in your first house, but this time the focus is on you. Do something special for yourself, like getting a tarot reading or buying a new journal. You can gain valuable psychic <laughs> insight with serious self-reflection now. And for health, the cosmos signals the beginning of a new era. You might even experience a health issue that encourages you to change your lifestyle and overall approach to life. It might also coincide with a decision to turn over a new leaf with your health is concerned from this point on. It will be a more greener and rewarding leaf. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Right. So let's get into this week's episode topic. And this week's episode topic is communication is key. So there are five communication styles. So I'm going to briefly go through each one and then we'll go from there. So the first one is passive aggressive. And passive aggressive communicators never express anything directly, they hide everything avoid direct conflict, and they create a discrepancy between actions and actual opinions. Then there's passive. Passive communication style strives to, strive to avoid conflict using humble and easygoing language, but it can also lead to speakers having difficulty expressing themselves. The aggressive communication style, aggressive communication communicators try to attempt to dominate the discussion. They speak louder than the other participants. <laughs> Maintain intense eye contact and step into personal space of oh, others. Who are <laughs> Jesus. Manipulative communication style. They use cunning tactics to guide the discussion in the direction they want it to go. This style influences others to act a certain way while hiding your true, atten true intentions. And then there's assertive. Assertive communicators show confidence in what they say without monopolizing a conversation. This communication style is the most effective. So where what communication style do you feel like you use the most? Um, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of like a combination. <laughs> so I don't know. Um I would say 
sometimes <laughs> sometimes I use passive aggressive, which is not good, but <laughs> sometimes I think I use passive aggressive and sometimes I use when I'm I guess at my best I'm using assertive. I mean, yeah, assertive. What type of atmospheres do you feel like you use passive aggressiveness in? Um more so personal. I think it's more so personal um personal situations. I don't feel like I'm good with like telling people how I really feel. Mm -hmm. Um, So sometimes like if if I don't feel like it's worth like the back and forth or if it's, if it's not even going to like change the relationship or then I won't say anything. But um, yeah, that's what I think. Okay. For me, um, Definitely assertive. <laughs> and I wasn't always assertive. Um, but I think when I was in college, when I was in undergrad, one of my professors called me out because we had to present something. And we had to dress up and everything. And she was like, what you're saying is good, but you're not being assertive. You're not making eye contact. You're not saying these things like you believe them. Because it was like something personal we had to do. And ever since then, I was like, okay. Every time she told, I was like, I got to be more assertive. I got to speak up. And it's funny because growing up, people used to always be like, when they see my mom, they would say, why your mom always looking up in the air? And then when you say hi to her, then she'll look down. But my mom, that's how my mom was taught. Like, don't ever look down. Um, Always look up. So that's what she taught us. So for me, though, it was an insecurity as to why most of the time I wouldn't make eye contact or I would look away. It wasn't that I was hearing what people were saying. It was just the insecurities. But through public, because I did take public speaking as a minor in undergrad. So through public speaking. Oh, did you? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I did. Um, I t- I. So what happened was I I had to take that as a um, a core class or whatever yeah. you call them, and I really liked it. Okay. So I ended up taking it on as a minor later. Um, down, but um, that helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. And then of course going to therapy, it's like oh you got to tell them how you feel. You have to let somebody know when it hurts your feelings and things like that. So. Definitely through all of those different things, I became assertive and um, I tried to, I'm working on hearing what other people have to say and then talking after them because I've had in the past, especially in relationships, friendships, not letting the other person finish, interrupting them while they're talking because I want to get my thoughts out but that's not really actively listening you're listening to respond not to what the person is actually saying so you never get anywhere essentially so just things that I learned along the way um and I've always spoke up for myself even in school people would say at school or at work can you because I never had a problem with calling out the wrong things even if it meant getting in trouble so I would hear what everybody else had to say. Then I would go to the person and be like, this and this and this and this and this. So I still am like that, which I don't think is a bad thing, but I encourage other people to speak up for themselves because you won't always have somebody there to do it for you. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't really see myself in any of the other um categories so yeah that's that's where I stand with it but communication communication um can make or break the conversation or the relationship because Mm -hmm. as we've said in the past um sometimes things could be fixed by a conversation or an apology or just letting the other person know this is how you made me feel. I don't like that feeling and things like that. But a lot of people aren't comfortable with doing that. Yeah. I think like for me, 
I think the the biggest reason why I may not address issues with certain people is because I don't want <clears throat> I don't want to I don't want it to go the wrong way. You know what I mean? Because I feel like a lot of people are defensive as opposed to saying, oh, okay, I understand why you can feel that way. I'm going to try to work on it, you know? So I think it's more so that, that I mean, I'm not, I'm not really like that in my, in my relationship. Like, um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm more aggressive in my relationship. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to tell this person because I, been with this person for a long time so i'm going to tell them how i feel or whatever um but when it comes to things outside of my relationship um especially and especially at work i'm a lot of times i'll be like i feel like a, a lot of things are intentional so i don't know i feel like i gotta get back <laughs> like i don't know yeah, yeah I, a lot of times how you communicate or present yourself dictates how other people are going to treat you and make you feel um so you gotta speak up for yourself and then too it can change the game and make the other the person that's doing it that's realize true. that i need to change yeah. up how I speak to people yeah i mean that is true i just think i think in a professional setting it could go one of two ways you know what i mean it could be either taken as constructive criticism and used for them to you know redirect or do things differently or it could be used against you and penalized against you because i feel like that also happens in toxic work environments where you know it's not it's like oh you you know you may basically because like if somebody tell you about yourself you do kind of feel like oh okay i'm not doing something right and a lot of times when people feel that way, sometimes they want to make you feel bad too. So um, that's something yeah, that we have to work on. It depends on how you approach it. Because it's like, you can't let somebody just keep pushing, pushing over, pushing over, pushing over. You got to let them know, especially if, if, if it's in a work environment where you want to be productive or they want you to be productive. And the, the way that they speak to you or communicate with you is not helping you to be productive. Um, I feel like this goes back to the hurt and harm because what somebody is saying may hurt you, but it's not doing you any harm. It's making you reflect. And a lot of people don't like to look in the mirror. It was, it was something that I, I still struggle with sometimes, but what it does is make you do a self evaluation on yourself and be like, okay, am I the problem or am I, what part am I playing in this? Cause you are playing a part in it. Like I said, if you're not letting them know and they feel like they have that leeway to talk to you like that, that's the part that you're playing with it. They need to change. Right. Yeah. But, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not good with like addressing it head on. Cause my thing is, Okay, you think you're gonna keep talking to me like this, but when I remove myself from the situation, you're gonna be talking to damn self. So <laughs> I think it's more so of me. Yes, I, I do need to, you know, learn how to I feel like I think I think another thing is just being like a passionate person or um a, again being a black woman. Sometimes things that you say, I I feel like your delivery sometimes can be taken wrong. So um I think it's just a matter of, and everybody is not uh, emotionally mature enough, even even though it is a business setting, to actually like, oh, okay, I could have said this different or whatever. Like a lot of times people don't see the wrong in what they do or how somebody could be offended by something they said. Yeah, I think I'm at the point where I don't, I don't care about that. If you're doing something that offends me, then I'm going to let you know. And you could take it how you want to take it. If you do something that's going to affect my job, I know it's, this is not where I need to be. Yeah. It just it, it comes with doing a lot of work on yourself and, and being it. You know, everybody's not there. But, for instance, I remember when I used to be a supervisor at CVS and this girl used to smell. And she was, I, I don't know what was going on, but she would smell so bad that customers would be coming. She used to be a cashier. And they'd be like, what is that smell? Oh, my God. Was it like underarm or? It was something BV or something. Oh. 
So even all my coworkers and the employees, the managers, the general, everybody. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. So one night I just couldn't take it anymore. And so I we worked our shift and I pulled her in the office and I told her, I was like, you know, I am coming to you, you know, as another female. I said, I know we sometimes have things going on. I said, but I can't allow people to sit around and talk about you anymore. Even with customers, I was like, whatever you need. Because I know sometimes if you're struggling, you don't always have the feminine hygiene products that you need or whatever. And so I just let her know, like, whatever you need, if it's feminine hygiene products, you know, whatever, just let me know. I'm willing to help you. And she was upset at first. But after that day, she came in. She wasn't smelling no more. She was, she was doing her hair, everything. Right. So if I, I had, in that case, something needs to be said, you know? Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's all about your delivery. And it is about yeah. the messenger, too. You know, it's about yeah. the messenger as well. But, I mean, I don't, yeah. Maybe she just, mm, I, don't I don't know. But I know that from then on, I think she knew. I don't. She probably didn't know other people could smell it. Yeah, but I. She so she was cool with another girl, who um, worked there too, and I know she had said something to her about it, like, I don't know what was said, but the other friend came to me and said, "Thank you for telling her." You know, she didn't really know how. I don't think she really knew how to groom herself. Because when I say she used to wear this wig and this wig, you know, sometimes them, um, what do they call synthetic wigs? Like if you lay on them and stuff, they start getting naughty and nappy. She was sleeping on a synthetic wig? I guess because that's how the wig looked. But she had mm -hmm. nice hair. She mm -hmm. just didn't know how to do her hair. Oh, so the yeah. other friend did her hair. and Yeah. You never so, know. No, she probably didn't have no parents or something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. So... In situations like that, if I had never said anything, she would have. And then I knew when customers came in, it was like, what's that smell? Because you smell yourself first. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and then people were like, I don't want to go to the bathroom after. I got tired of hearing them. I'm like, damn, poor girl. Y'all the managers. But they were men. So, just like, okay, let me address this situation. And so now, if that ever happens again, I mean, it did happen again. This is so crazy. When I used to work with recovering addicts, we used to have to take urine. Now, if they would have told me that we had to do this at this job, I probably wouldn't have took it. You had to go in the, in the room with in them? In the bathroom. That's to wild. To make sure That's they true. were not doing anything to the urine. Just one lady. I mean, whew. I had to tell her. Everybody else was talking about it, like, ooh, I ain't doing yours today to such and such here. Mm -hmm. But come to find out, she used to do stuff out in the streets, and she wasn't taking care of her body. And so right. we ended up giving her, like, a care package and all this kind of stuff. But from a woman's perspective, like, when you let, when you let men release inside of you, that stuff will have you stinking, okay? <laughs> That's what it be. <laughs> People be. Listen, that stuff, and that's how a lot of a lot of girls be having a BV, whatever. And then a lot of people yeah. don't urinate afterwards or whatever. But um, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. listen, on, on on the topic of body odor, what age do you think kids start needing deodorant? As soon as you start smelling them or what age do you think typically that is? It's different for everybody. I mean, I don't I don't know. I, I would stay around 10. 10? Hell no, girl. Let me tell you. Well, Ava's definitely been wearing, she's been wearing deodorant since she probably was like seven. Aiden. Okay. <laughs> he was sitting next what? to me. Yes. He was sitting next to me. I was like, mind you, he had no clothes on. He had he had took a bath, I think, the night before. I was like, what is that you? I left his arm up. Hoagie City, right? <laughs> <Hogi> City. <laughs> so that's what I said. I said, oh my God, this is Hoagie City. 
I was like, mm, his, his underarms stink. Why Anthony then had to smell his underarms, right? Why? I'm telling you that they stink. <laughs> so he smelled it. He was like, oh boy. Ate it. Ava, take him upstairs. Wash his underarms. <laughs> right? So then he comes downstairs and he's like, smell it. <laughs> So she don't wash his underwear and puts the deodorant on him. <laughs> and so he was like, okay. She was like, Aiden was like, yay. <laughs> At that age? Yeah. Because he be ripping and running. I don't know. He wasn't. Yeah. No. Onions. Like underarm. That's what it was. That's very yeah. young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've heard people like, it's definitely changing. Like, I know I didn't wear deodorant until I was like older, but I know it's, it is changing with kids being younger. So I think Ava started maybe, I want to say like seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seven, but maybe it's what they eat. I don't know, child. That's young. Yeah. Or, they I mean, I think. The order it for your five year old. Like, not buying it. <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't think it's an everyday thing, but it, it probably just depends on his activities. But, girl, I was like, because he was sitting next to me. I mean, he had his arms down. He was sitting next to me. I was like, what is that stuff? <laughs> yeah, we got it. But yeah, with communication, stuff like that, like even with my friends, if certain stuff, if you going out with me, like what is going on? Damn. Some stuff that I see with people and how they friends go out. Like you got your friend go out like that when y'all all. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna be honest with you. I do, I would not know what to say. I would not know what to say if somebody. I mean, I don't think it's ever happened to. It did. It did happen. To, so it did happen to me before. We were on a trip and it was. I didn't really. I was like, but I didn't say nothing. I mean, I don't know. I'm like, I feel like you see you. You see me. I feel like you see you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but at the same time, it's like we all I don't, I don't know. I just I just was I I will say when I was in that situation, I was like, do you think that that's appropriate? <laughs> they probably be like, yeah, what are you talking about? And I'll be like, that's do you have something else? Because that's that don't say if we all going somewhere and it's like dressing up and we all got on dresses and then somebody come and they got on like they got on the dress yeah I think that is different I think I think if somebody's not dressing like that's why a lot of times and that's why I know like people say that but I know a lot of times you might if you're going out with your friends you might ask what you're wearing right and I've heard recently where people would say that like well what does it matter or it's just it's like well you don't want to feel under or overdressed you know what I mean if you don't mind being over or underdressed then you don't have to ask the person but um, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's nothing wrong with asking one of your friends, "Oh, what you wear?" Right. Um, and it, and also, you don't want to be wearing the same shit. So it exactly. is like it is. I don't think it's anything. Like I've recently seen that on um on social media. I know Lala was talking about that. She was like, "I be asking them, and they be like, oh, wear whatever you want to wear.'" And I show yeah. up, and they you all in a cat suit, and they got on <laughs> prime dresses. Like, no. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think at my big age now, I don't care. Like, I don't. I don't think I asked. I don't care. Maybe when I was younger and went went out like to the club and stuff, yeah, maybe. But now I don't care because I'm gonna wear what I want to wear, and I don't care. Now if we're going to a gala, <laughs> you yeah, know, that's a, what I'm saying. a gala yeah. or something, then yeah, that is different. But if we're just going out, I mean, I don't go to the club no more. So most yeah, of the time, I'm, I'm going. I'm going out to eat. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's. I think it's. Like, for one, with all my friends, I've been friends with them for such a long time. For two, it depends on how you say things. It's not what you say. Sometimes it's how you say it. You don't want to be like, you know, coming at somebody wrong. And, you know, but learning how to communicate, learning. I can't say the same thing in every way with each of my friends or with my, I got to know that person know how to approach them, what to say, what not to say. And that all comes with knowing them and it comes with growth as well. Yeah, I mean, definitely for me, uh, the way that someone, the way that people talk to you, it is going to depend on your relationship with that person. 
you know, I know it's now my big age. I know it's certain things that I can say to some people that I can't say to other people. You know what I mean? Because they may take offense to it. But like somebody else, like if you know me, then you're not going to be offended because you know we good. You know what I mean? But um, so I looked up ways to improve your communication. Um, one of the ways is to really listen. You spoke on that earlier about actually actively listening, not waiting for the person to stop just so you can say whatever you got to say. Another way is they say, I was like, I'm not sure. It says come alongside the other person, right? So when they say that, they're saying like, don't beat your friend up <laughs> if they telling you something, you know, basically like not being judgmental, just being supportive. Um, don't try to solve their issues. Don't try to judge them. You know what I mean? Um, just being there, showing that you care about them. I think sometimes, you know, some people, it's hard for them to do that because they're trying to find out how they can fix it. Um, another but then way, that's when you communicate and be like, listen, I don't, I just need you to listen. I don't need no. Right. I'm, uh, saying, I'm saying as the person that's listening, you know, sometimes you want to automatically give them. Um, um try to advice. Solve it. And that's the same yeah. one thing is don't give unwanted advice exactly yeah. and it says check your tone and body language and the last one is that the last one no um it says be real I'm, yeah. I'm 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 guessing you know some people can be fake you know yeah um and the last one is it's not about you definitely agree <laughs> with that <laughs> so yeah i mean I think it's something that's it's definitely a developing skill, something that is constantly developing. I think that's why a lot of times old older people, you know, they can sit and listen <laughs> and then say like five words and it'd be effective, you know. Yeah. But um, it, it's definitely a developing skill when it comes to communication because your communication skills may be better in an intimate or personal relationship and not as great at work, you know, not as great at school, um, not as great with your children. Or it could be great in school. I know some people that are great at work. You know, their professional, everything is great at work. But when it comes to their, their personal relationship, everything is in shambles. You know, yeah. some people use their professional relationship. because You can kind of like create that. You know, mm -hmm. you can kind of like create it, cater. You can control it a little better as opposed to like your personal stuff where people know you, know where you came from, stuff like that. So, I mean communication is key isn't that what they say communication is key yeah, that's the topic <laughs> communication <laughs> is key it is. communication is key miscommunication can be very damaging yeah a lot of times because you may have said something in a moment and you didn't meet like the way that the person received it may have been not correct and then a lot of times so many friendships relationships or whatever are like destroyed because of miscommunication you know but so. then a part of it is people have to heal their traumas their insecurities and things like that because you know to be open to receive constructive criticism everything about you or what people are saying can't always be good you gotta have sunshine you gotta have rain in order to be better so being in a place where you can hear, you know, criticism or things that you may do wrong. And and a lot of times we realize the stuff that we do wrong. We're just like, this is just who I am. You got to take it or leave it. But that's toxic because you can change if you want to. If you want to. Um, a lot of things are because of how we were taught, how we were, how we grew up. But Sometimes it's not right. A lot of times it's not right. And it could be damaging, not just to you, but to other people. And so heal so that you can be in a place where you're receptive to criticism and things like that. Because back to what you were saying about how if it was your boss, how you would, wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable with going to them. But they got to hire up. And if they're not doing right, I'm sure that their higher up will come to them and say what they need to say. And, and a lot of times in that situation, you don't really have a choice but to take it, reflect, see what you can do better. So treat each situation equally. I, that's how I look at people in situations. My boss, you're a person. My friend, you're a person. I'm going to treat people the way that I treat people. Nobody is 
even though, you know, people look at themselves on a hierarchy, like, no, you can't talk to me any kind of way just because you're my boss, or you can't talk to me any kind of way because you're the CEO. No, I'm a person, I got feelings. Don't do things to people that you don't want done to you. Yeah, yeah. and I think, yeah, and I think even with the communication, sometimes some people are the way they are because they didn't communicate with maybe their parent or whomever caused them that pain and because they like haven't got an apology or whatever that they like really need in order to heal it's like their communication is rougher maybe you know and it's like sometimes it's like a talk can go a long way you know talking to yeah. somebody maybe and and that's one thing I feel like when we were like when I was younger and stuff I didn't feel like I could speak up or like tell my parents something like yeah. about something that maybe they, they did or whatever. But I know there was a shift where I felt like I was an adult and I could speak openly, you know? Yeah. And yeah. call, you know, call them out when they're wrong. But um, that comes with, you know, personal development. Sometimes you may not, you know, just because, just because I'm your child th- does not mean that I'm no longer an adult, that I'm no right. longer a person, that I no longer have feelings that I, you know, and that's, um, something that you know, as being a parent, you gotta realize that you know, like this person is your child, but they're an adult, <laughs> right? And that's what I was saying, like with the boss, like you're my boss, but I'm an adult, so yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a work in progress. You gotta be working on it and look at yourself and your own faults when people bring them to your attention. Are people wrong sometimes? Yes, but it's still worth you evaluating yourself and seeing how you could be better so communication is key at the end of the day gotta learn how to communicate so we're going to close with our lyrics like we always do so what's your lyrics for this week so my lyrics is from the song understanding by escape (laughs) <laughs> I was going to pick that. What you? <laughs> I'm yeah. glad you did. But I feel like you used it before. So I was this like, song? Oh. Yeah. Uh, what I need from you, probably. What I need from you is understanding. How can we communicate if you don't hear what I say? What I need from you is understanding. So simple as one, two, three. Understanding is what we need. You don't even know me. You just want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's all your lyrics? Seriously? Wait, hold on. <laughs> I can't even. You don't even know me. You just want to do what you want to do. That's not the way it should be, no. You should listen to me, boy. <laughs> listen. Yes. <laughs> you just want to do what you want to do. Listen. That is like a man mantra. <laughs> Child. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother <laughs> You just want to do what you want to do. That's not the way, honey. So my lyrics are from Express Yourself by Salt and Pepper. And the lyrics I chose say, you know, life is all about expression. You only live once and you're not coming back. So express yourself, yeah. Express yourself. You got to be you and only you be. Express yourself and let me be me. Express yourself. Don't tell me what I cannot do, baby. Mm. So... Express yourself and get some understanding. (laughs) (laughs) In order to be an effective communicator. So we're going to get out of here. Thank you guys for listening, for supporting. Um, You know, every Wednesday you can catch us on 216 The Blend. Um, Also on our Instagram, the underscore join underscore podcast. If you tap the link in our bio, it will take you to everywhere we are. Um, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, whatever your favorite listening platform is, is where we are. So we appreciate you once again. We will catch you guys next week. Peace. Peace out. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't leave yet. Thanks for listening to my mom and auntie. Make sure you guys follow them on Instagram at the underscore john underscore podcast on twitter at w underscore the j on tiktok at the john a podcast 
and visit our website, www.dollpod.net. Don't forget to ask the door, send in your listening letters to the dollpod at gmail.com. Period. This is the joy a podcast. I love y'all. Be forward.